Hello and welcome to the North Hudson Village Board Candidates Forum. My name is Mary Claire Potter and it's my pleasure to interview the candidates running for the North Hudson Village Board on April 3rd, 2018. We have four candidates running for three open positions and it's my pleasure to welcome all of them here tonight. I'd like to welcome Brian Pike, who is a current incumbent, Tim Zayas, also a current incumbent, welcome Robert Cizak, and also welcome Philip Matz. So thank you all for being here. First, we will ask each of you to talk up, tell us about yourself, your background and qualifications, and then um, I have a few follow-up questions with that, and then we will alternate who goes first. So I'm gonna start with, with you, Brian, and just tell us a little bit about your background and qualifications and why you're interested in serving. Okay, well, I'm pretty much an ordinary type of person that you wouldn't generally notice. Um, I am still married to my high school sweetheart for the past 42 years. We raised six kids. We moved to North Hudson back in 1995 or 23 years ago. I graduated from Bible College in Chattanooga, Tennessee with a pastoral major. I came back home and became an associate pastor of our local church and uh, the principal of the Christian day school at the time and did that for two years. Then I went off and started a church and we, I pastored that church for 10 years. It was just a uh, community church, non-denominational, independent. And we ran that up to about 200 members. We had 10 acres of land and they wanted to build a building which was gonna cost about 700 and some thousand dollars. And at that point in time, since I had never taken a salary, I was always doing technology work on the side, and I had some offers out there to go that direction and decided to go that direction at that point in time. I was in technology for the next 20 years, uh, retired five years ago as vice president of information technology for a pretty large company. And so those are some of my qualifications. I helped build for a lot of companies their first internal and external networks, which were new. I go way back to the early days of Windows. <laughs> um, and I have served on the board for the past three years and in the last two years as Chair of Public Works. Great, thank you, welcome. Tim. Thank you, Mary Claire. Uh, I'm Tim Zeiss, live on 629 Cherry Circle North. Um, I've been married for 32 years and have, have three grown daughters. I've been living in North Hudson for 26 years. Uh, I've been in technology for over 35 years and currently work for U.S. Bank in, as a VP in technology contracts. Prior to U.S. Bank, I was employed at City of Woodbury, where I managed, uh, I was an MIS coordinator, basically the technology coordinator, and managed over a $500,000 budget, which included staff, multiple buildings, and basically represented and, and, and responsible for all the technology for the City of Woodbury. Um, being an incumbent, I served in a public safety. I was on the public work with Brian and also public welfare committee. <coughs> I know the value of how taxpayer dollars are fund a municipality. I'll carry that forward if I were to be reelected. Great, thank you. Welcome, Robert. Okay, I was uh, raised on a dairy farm north of Rice Lake, Wisconsin. I spent four years in the U.S. Navy as a communication specialist, educated as an engineer and graduated with my RF engineering license. I worked for two major corporations for 30 years and worked for the Cameron School District for an additional 11 years, all in the communication field. I stopped working in 2014 and went to Karis Bible College in Plymouth and graduated in May 2016 as a missionary. I'm now retired with two children and three grandchildren and enjoy teaching the Bible, American history, and our founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and its amendments. I feel that my upbringing, education, and experience qualifies me to make sound decisions based on my values, the law, and residents' needs. This will enhance the quality of life in the village of North Hudson. Great, thank you so much. Welcome, Phil. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Philip Matz. I live at 606 4th Street North. Um, I was actually born in Hudson, Wisconsin. Uh, I grew up in the middle of Wisconsin. Um, after I graduated high school, I moved back. 
Um, great community. Love it here. Um, I worked at – my family's been in business – on and off in this community for a very long time. So I worked in my family's fixture and cabinet shop for uh, many years. Um, and then I moved on to the trades. Um, so I'm a journeyman carpenter uh, when 2008 happened. Uh, a lot of carpenters were laid off. Uh, I actually moved into healthcare, uh, earning my uh, healthcare administration degree. Um, from there, I've moved on to Bremer Bank. I work in their facilities department where I manage a network of 90 branches and a 125,000 square foot uh, service center, which houses about 600 people. Um, and I do everything from uh, HVAC to uh, parking lots and, and everything asset related you can imagine. Um, I think uh, my experiences uh, in leadership with my construction, my education, should be able to help the village out very nicely. All right, thank you. So Tim, we'll start with you. Uh, why are you interested in continuing to serve on the North Hudson Village Board? Why am I interested? First of all, I believe in engaging myself in the community, Mary Claire. I'm a founding member of our, our current active North Hudson uh, Neighborhood Watch Program. Um, I'm the president of the North Hudson Pepper Fest and have been that for the last three years. And uh, my, only, my interest in being a North Hudson trustee only enhances my involvement with this community. I enjoy the community. I feel it's, it's, it's remained the same, yet still has grown as far as the number of people building homes and in expansions. But overall, I just feel that getting involved with the community is, is most important in my life, and I think I've done that over the last 26 years since I've been here. So. Great. <clears throat> All right, Robert, why are you interested in serving on the North Hudson <laughs> Village Board? Well, you know, I became involved in government in the summer of 2016 because I wasn't happy with the direction our country is heading. And I'm now trying to preserve America for my children and grandchildren, as I know it. My values, education, and experience have developed skills necessary to gather facts, organize data, and reach conclusions based on data analysis, existing law, and citizens' needs. So I wish to share my skills with the people of North Hudson. My Christian belief system holds me in the highest standards of integrity. I won't accept bribes or favors and will make decisions based on my fiscally conservative, biblical worldview. I believe in the free enterprise system a system where marketplace competition is a good thing for village residents, a system which brings the most bang for the buck. And I will use this philosophy when approving vendor contracts. I have a lack of fear when it comes to tackling difficult or controversial issues. These issues, these issues will not cause me to sidestep them, but face them head on in order to come up with solutions which serve the needs of the majority of North Hudson citizens in a timely manner. I recognize the fact that I can't please all the people all the time, but will make judgments which serve the majority of the residents most of the time. My, this is probably my, one of my bigger th issues. My Christian morality and the Declaration of Independence requires me to protect life, both born and unborn. This is the very first unalienable right listed in the Declaration. Therefore, it's the most important. Undoubtedly, protecting life is the greatest responsibility of any elected official. And I promise to uphold this responsibility with utmost respect. Another thing is liberty means to be unburdened by unnecessary government regulations. Citizens should have the right to govern themselves without gov government telling them how to behave. The small majority, the small minority of residents which can't govern themselves will be dealt with on an individual basis without making sweeping regulation changes affecting all the people. All right, thank you. And, and Phil, why are you interested in serving? Well, a friend of mine actually pointed out there was an open position um, 
and I saw an opportunity to serve, to serve my community, my family, um, my friends that live here uh, in a way I've never considered before. So, um, you know, I've lived in this community for over 20 years. Uh, I've raised my family here. I've sent them through the school systems. Um, and and I, I've been involved in community functions before, but not in this way. And I think I would really like to be part of that engine that helps make those decisions. So, Brian, why would you like to continue to serve on the North Hudson Village? My apologies. That's okay. Um, to be honest, uh, when I first started serving, someone asked me to fill a vacant term back in 2015, about nine months worth. And my initial response was, oh, I'm not a big fan of politics <laughs> and politicians especially. Um, but in that nine months, I learned that this is more of a role of serving. Um, there's definitely no money in it. And you get the opportunity to meet everybody in the village, uh, not 100%, but you get to know everybody a lot more in the village. And I found the past three years of service to the village to be very fulfilling. And I just appreciate the opportunity to try to learn more and meet more people in our village. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I'm back on track now with our next question. So I'm going to start with Robert on that one. And what do you see are the most important issues uh, facing the village in the next two years and beyond? Well, there's probably a number of issues to be dealt with. But here's a couple of the bigger ones that I've identified. Uh, fire services are expected to increase, which will cost North Hudson more money. These services are currently contracted with the city of Hudson. Therefore, not much can be done about this issue unless North Hudson decides to build their own fire department, which will probably cost much more than contracting with the city of Hudson. Another issue is the proposed quick trip facility to be built in 2019 will be a welcome addition to the village. It'll supply tax revenue for the village and more competition for village residents. Also rebuilding Highway 35 will require additional funds for infrastructure improvements, sewer and water. However, again, there's not much the village can do to reduce this cost and yet keep the same level of proposed improvements. Keep in mind, while under construction, this project is gonna, is expected to cause traffic delays. And lastly, maintaining existing services without raising taxes has been the main goal of the village board. And I will continue to make decisions along the same lines. Taxes are near the levy limit, but debt is relatively low, therefore, the challenge is to keep services at the current level with North Hudson's limited budget without having to raise taxes or incur more debt. All right, thank you, Robert. Phil, your thoughts? Well, um, first I wanna say I think the Village Board does a great job right now. I think they do a fantastic job and all I want to do is to help maintain a healthy village. You know, I want clean, safe streets, clean drinking water, um, and I want people to be able to raise their families here like I raised mine. Um, I know that the village does a great job researching issues that do come up using uh, PACER evaluations and uh, using other research, repair and maintenance uh, research. And uh, um, I, I heard them talking about the investment in the solar gardens, which um, I think is fantastic, um, helps lower costs, and it's environmentally conscious. So... Uh, um, I think that's great, um, and uh, I would like to support, you know, continue supporting the police and their involvement in the community to help, you know, just make sure that it's safe for people and their families to get to the parks and be out and about so we can all meet each other and be friendly neighbors. All right, thank you. Brian. All three years that I've been here, we've been... Uh, I've been involved with public works, so it's been my uh, continuing plan to maintain our streets, sewer, and water systems to the highest quality possible, but it's, it's a lot about planning because we have a limited budget. It's very important to me to make sure that we are planning what we're doing each year in regards to each 
because you can't do them all at once. And I'm very much about, I don't like having things break and then we have to jump in there and fix it and spend a lot of money in a hurry. So I'm very much about plan, plan, plan. I agree, agree we are facing ever increasing costs for EMS and fire mm -hmm. service, service for the village. Um, we have an aging sewer and water pipe system that needs to be carefully planned on, on the upgrade. Uh, as he as uh, he mentioned, there is a, a road improvement to, to 6th Street, 35. That's coming, uh, 2021. We're already in the planning stages, early planning stages of that. We've seen the dollar amounts, and it looks a little staggering. Um, we have worked with the state to get funding for a good chunk of it, but there's still a lot of money that we're going to be facing. So those are some of the important issues that I see facing us in the next two years. All right. Thank you. Tim. Thank you. And being at the end, and we had some, a lot of repetition going on here, but I'll try to get my point across. I'm going to first start out with the St. Croix EMS decision. I think uh, we know we extended our contract through the September of 2018. And so it's going to come to a point where we're going to have to make a decision if, if we want to take on uh, an increased cost, if there's going to be an increase, increased mm -hmm. cost. And if that increase happens, of course, are the services equal to that, right. to, or, or to what we're having right now? And we have to look and see if there's alternatives. Yeah, with the proximity of, of some of the other functions around us in North Hudson here, there could be alternatives to, the, to that uh, overall decision. So that's what we have to decide. Second, going off of what uh, Brian talked about and, and what Robert talked about, uh, the Wisconsin State Highway 35 DOT restructure. Um, it's important, like um, Brian talked about, uh, to look at the funding that's coming from the state of Wisconsin. But also, you know, we needed to make some decisions as far as the landscaping, design, the street lights. Uh, we started some of that activity, like Brian talked about. And we also need to keep track of making sure that the state comes through with their funding and that we also control the funding that we have going into the project. Excellent. Thank you. So our next question is, do you see any things that can be done in the next two years that would improve the municipal operations in the village? And what would be your ideas for those improvements of those operations? And we'll start with Phil. <laughs> well, like I said, I've lived in North Hudson, raised my family here a long time, and it's been very smooth. So I'm not really looking, looking for any changes. Um, I think there's, there's always opportunities to make changes and efficiencies. Um, you know, I... I uh, I work with a lot of vendors, um, so I, I'm pretty good at leveraging those relationships to hopefully find better prices, keep, keep, keep costs down within our budget. Um, you know, I manage a $3 million budget at work, and I understand the village is approaching that, so I think, uh, I think it would fit well. I don't, I don't see any major, major improvements that could happen at this moment. All right, thank you. Brian. Well, we need uh, to, because again, public works is my focus, we need to upgrade what are called lift stations. And the lift stations around the village basically move our waste through the village, through pipes, and all the way to the Hudson treatment plant. Those things are 37 years old and they're starting to fall apart. We've run into situations recently where the, uh, there are these supposable disposable flush wipes that are plugging them up all the time on us and we keep asking the village to please not flush those things. But we need to get those upgraded, and it's, we've got some initial quotes. It's gonna take some time to get them done, and in the meantime, our team is having to run out there every couple weeks and, and fix those things until we get them done. Also, I think we need to continually educate our public works staff. It's important that they have the knowledge uh, to be able to handle all the systems that they have to handle. And so we've continued to push for more and more education. We've gotten uh, our new public works director some certifications on water that are going, going to help him. And there are some further certifications that we want to get him that would again continue to reduce costs. We've, uh, we've done some things, uh, upgrading some equipment and getting rid of old equipment, which cost a little bit, but as it turns out, it's starting to save us. So those are things that we were constantly looking at. And we're also looking at ways to uh, continue to reduce our costs by, by alternative cost savings, as was mentioned, the uh, energy garden. We've even had people like Sprint asking to build a tower somewhere here, and then we would be able to get some income back from that if, if someone like that puts up a tower. 
So we are, we're constantly looking for new ways to generate some income. We do not own our water towers, Hudson does, so we can't get any rent off of the top of those towers, which I wish we could. And I think that's about it. All right, thank you. Tim. Thank you. Um, first of all, our current municipal operations are well organized and, and they really operate on a minimal type budget. And I think it's important to build off of that type of environment and without increasing any type of property taxes or making any changes to our current operations that affect these type of services that we currently have. I, I would like to see possibly bringing a little more technology into the Nutson um, village in itself so we can communicate to our residents a little bit better to talk about the, the towels or rags that get thrown down to our you know waste and, 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 and destroy or hurt or our list stations, maybe we could communicate a little quicker to them or, or, or with the other means. But the key is to do something and put something in place without, again, having an overall expense behind that. Ultimately, I just feel our, our citizens of North Hudson are getting you know, a great value for our current operations that we have here. All right, thank you. Robert, your thoughts. Thank you. Um, you know, the fire, water, sewer, and ENF services are all contracted with the city of Hudson. These services should be looked at uh, to evaluate a more cost-effective method of providing these services. Whether changes can be made or not remains to be seen, but I would think that these services should be looked at to compare to see where we're going and if better services can be made. All right, thank you. All right, so now we will wrap up with everyone having an opportunity to see if you have any other comments that you'd like to add or something that you weren't able to communicate earlier in some of the questions. And Brian, we'll start with you. Well, I guess one of the things that I'd like to add is, um, as Tim said, the technology, there we're both technology. Actually, there's a few here that are technology people. I've had residents ask for an early uh, alert system right off our website where they could get a text so we, they know that we're going to yeah. plow, for example, as there's a lot of <clears throat> cars that end up out there kind of plowed in. Um, but I do think that there's more that we could do with our technology. Uh, I'm not sure how much money we have set aside for that. It's something I think we need to relook at as a board and, and try and get some priority there. Um, the past three years, though, has been a privilege to serve uh, North Hudson, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for the opportunity and trust that the folks have placed in me and to get to know them a whole lot better. Great. Thank you. Tim. <clears throat> I, I, won, I got on the board the last uh, two years ago by a write-in vote, and I won by one vote over the write-in. So all I want to say is that whether you vote for Brian, Robert, or Philip, or myself, the key is just vote. I think every one of us here, I want to represent North Hudson. I think, and that's the biggest thing. We're here today doing this, and, and I'm fine with either one of these gentlemen on the board. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Robert. Thank you. Um, I think the Village Board has done a good job in holding the line on spending, thereby keeping taxes and debt at reasonable levels. I wish to, con I wish to continue this fiscally conservative trend. And really, there's no hot button issues that I can think of that require immediate changes. Very good, thank you. And Phil, please. Um, well, I do wanna say thank you to all my friends and family that are allowing me the time to do this and take it away from them. Um, very grateful to that. Um, I make no illusions I'm gonna make, be making life or death decisions on the village here, but uh, I know that taking care of the village is a very important job and needs somebody to do it and hopefully I'm that person um, and then to tag on with both Brian and Tim I've lived here a long time and I think communication coming from the village out to the community there's definitely some room for improvement there and I would really like to be part of that group that spearheads that so all right, so it sounds like some great opportunities. Well, I want to thank each one of you for your time and participation tonight. And also want to thank you for your willingness to serve in this position because we know it is additional time on top of everything else that you have going on, but it's a very crit critical role for the village and all the residents who live here. So thank you very much for that. Want to remind everyone to get out and vote on April 3rd. That's coming up shortly. Maybe spring will be here by then, but... Uh, uh, get out and vote on April 3rd. For the Hudson North Hudson Community Access TV, I'm Mary Claire Potter. Thank you.